This week on the Roll for Crit podcast, we're talking about new details on the King of New York board game, plus a new version of Flux, new additions to Game of Thrones, and lots of other new stuff. Plus, our topic of the week, Kickstarter. How has that affected board games, and what does that mean to the consumers like you? I'm Will Keeler. I'm Jonathan Estes, and this is Roll for Crit. So, uh, depending on when this podcast air, we actually get this online, uh, you've probably seen or have wanted to see the Godzilla movie that came out. And if you want something a bit more, seeing, actually seeing the monster, we said there's a board game called King of Tokyo. Now this is a great game where everyone chooses a different monster, roll dice, and see who can get to 20 victory points first and conquer Tokyo. They just announced their new expansion, King of New York, which will have the same mechanic, first on the 20 victory points wins. However, instead of having just Tokyo, you're going to have to have different areas of New York. So like you can have some in Manhattan and other boroughs. And also there's fame, which apparently gives you more victory points a turn, depending on whether you destroy buildings and I guess fight other monsters. And it looks like a lot of fun. And I'm excited for it. I mean, we've both played King of Tokyo, and we both think it's a great game. And um, we'll, I'm excited to see it come out soon and get our hands on it. Yeah, I think it sounded really cool. Uh, and, and also the military can attack you in this one. Yeah. So it sounds like they're really, they're taking the, well, I guess the military attacks in Japan too, but it sounds like they're embracing the Americanness of New York. Well, I, mean. I think what they're doing is the other game you could, you could also buy cards, and that's how military came up. Now the military, it's more like, instead of just, I choose a military attack, it's the military actually reacts, which makes sense for what a military would do. Yeah. I mean, they should react when they actually see a monster, but now they're actually reacting when... And the fact that the, you can destroy buildings is awesome, and that everyone has their own, you actually can be in the city, even if you're not, <laughs> you know, before only one person could be in the city at a time. Or two. If uh, you had oh, enough people, right, right? Well, but then it was the bay. But yeah. yeah, I guess. But yeah, yeah. It sounds it sounds fun. I mean, I'm I'm excited to see how all that stuff comes together. And I wonder what the monsters will be too. If they're going to use the same ones or well, all actually, it, it's new ones. Yeah. And we know three so far. Okay. There is uh, the sheriff, which is a T Rex with a little cowboy hat in his chair. Yes. <laughs> um, there's Kong, who looks like a white ape with like techno gloves and visor. Okay. <laughs> and then I, I forget the name of the last one, but it's like a fish bowl with a fish in it in a robot suit who has like oil ships attached to chains like anchors and for weapons and stuff. <laughs> the monster doesn't really significantly matter. I mean, there's evolution yeah. cards, which is a side thing that came from Are one of the previous Are those going to be in this one though? Yes, I bu at least I assume. Because um, after they announced, they released them for uh, the first expansion, every monster that's not a promo monster that came out before has had a set of those okay. cards. Because from what I can tell, while you don't put, I don't think you can put to Tokyo and New York together, I think you can have the monsters mix either way. Right. So you could it still play sense. as the Godzilla monster from King of Tokyo in New York. And relive Ni Godzilla 1998. <laughs> you know, that's what I want to do. That's what I do every night of my life. <laughs> Sorry, Vietnam. So in worldwide news here at Roll for Crit, we bring you the far-reaching coverage. Uh, there's this article that came out last week from the website DNA India talking about how board games for adults have been gaining popularity over the last couple of years in India. Uh, there have been a lot of gaming groups and things like that popping up more, a lot more members attaching. They talked about all their Facebook likes and stuff like that. Uh, and, uh, you know, they, they showed there's even someone even designed a game over there dealing with the politics of India. So there's. Uh, what's it called? Oh, it's called Politics of India. Of course. <laughs> uh, they, they work real hard on that name. <laughs> and uh, it's the most original name since. <laughs> I, couldn't think, I couldn't think of an example. Since I couldn't even think of one. Settlers of Catan, you settle Catan. Sure. But, uh, so that's really cool. So, so they're, that's, they're actually getting, you know, even more de designers and developers over there interested in, in board games, because I don't think there are a lot of uh, Indian game developers that are too well known. Uh, but it wasn't just 
this, so this article came out, and there are, there are actually two other news stories that uh, we put up this week coming from India. One was there was a Scrabble tournament over there that uh, some kid won, and then there was another story just about um, how there's, this group was trying to bring back traditional like ancient Indian board games that they used to play and try to bring, teach them to kids to kind of, uh, you know, uh, relive the heritage and the culture and that kind of thing. So apparently this is, India is now huge. <laughs> like I didn't expect to have three stories in one week of, of Indian board games, but it's pretty cool. It's cool to see, you know, we know Europe and us, but you don't hear too much from other, a lot of other countries. Like, Yeah, um, it's, it's great news because I mean, well, not just for board games, but I mean anything, movie, video games. The idea of that spreading and everyone and cultures taking it and making and taking their own culture, I guess, and making their own games and video games is great for everyone. You know, it shares knowledge, it brings new uh, new people to the table. Nothing, it's it's great all around. Yeah, the more and you um, want new blood to keep things. Fresh. Actually, apparently, a big game board game from Japan apparently is. Uh, coming out soon around here, which is interesting because they mentioned that uh, games from other yeah, I know countries. that's one thing we've talked about is that mm -hmm. I'm I've I've been sur I was always surprised that there aren't mo more board games come that come out of Japan since the video, the video game is, market is, is so, very huge. So, yeah. At least, well, it's, the video games are dwindling over there too, but that's a whole other discussion. Mm -hmm. But uh, generally, in Asia in general, just because they have such a history in you know Go and all that stuff. Well, yeah, they they invented them before we did, really. <laughs> exactly. No, um, um, so yeah. I mean, but it's cool. let's yeah. hope that all these come over the here. Trend and trend continues, yeah. hopefully, too. In other news, a new Flux expansion. And uh -oh. this, yes, uh, has to do with Cartoon Network. That's right, Cartoon Network Flux. And judging by the box cover over, uh, bar the box, <laughs> the box <art> cover over, <laughs> the artwork on the box, um, it's not just the most recent ones, such as Adventure Time and uh, Regular Show, which are both good shows, but uh, it shows also uh, Powerpuff Girls, uh, Samurai Jack and uh, Ed, Ed and Eddie, which I know you're a big fan of. I think I, I saw Johnny Bravo on. Yes, the, him as well. So um, I mean, that excites me that they're they're taking all of their um, trademarks, their sure franchises. Yeah, franchises, thank you. Uh, instead of just the most recent ones. I mean, the Adventure Time and the Regular Show are both good shows, but I mean, the other those old shows are still were at least I enjoyed them. They're so. also Adventure Time is getting its own Munchkin. And regular show already got its own flux, so it's kind of nice to, I guess, bring them all. Which, which also makes me think like they had their own games. <laughs> they just put Law and Dexter in there and stuff like that. Oh, he was on the cover too. Oh, he was. Yes, yeah, yes. Oh, How right. can we forget Dexter? Then I'm fine. <laughs> I'm the murderer, not the uh, cartoon. <laughs> <laughs> right. Strange crossover choice. Um, but I do. I yeah. I'm curious how it will how it will play different, because I know all the fluxes have little tweaks that make them a little different from each other, but that's, I think that's a good fit for a fun. Maybe they'll have a bunch of maybe cartoon joke, I don't know, like the <laughs> scientist and the, and like get Dexter and Johnny Bravo, the sexy scientist or something. <laughs> I like Who it knows? already. <laughs> sounds, sounds good to me. Um, beyond that, uh, going back to if you like education, have I got a story for you? <laughs> oh boy! <laughs> Every, everyone just perked up. Ooh, education! You say <laughs> you're talking about cartoons, but now I'm interested. Uh, there is another story this week talking about this teacher uh, named Sean Young. I don't remember where he's from uh, or what grade he teaches, but he introduced this new thing called Classcraft which is an entire game system that he invented that he actually is using uh, on his classes that he teaches. And I think a few other, some other schools and some other teachers have adopted this or similar programs as well. But essentially it turns learning into a role-playing game. So by doing certain things, by getting uh, certain scores or grades or whatever, you actually gain experience points and you can like spend those points on certain abilities. So for example, some of the things you can do are, there's teleport, <laughs> this is real, I'm not picking this up, where you can, if you use this power, you get to leave class for two minutes. So you get to go hang out in the hallway or whatever for two minutes and like, and you can stack them up. So he said like some kids would wait and then they'd leave for like 10 minutes and get out of class early. Or <laughs> there's one where you tele, or no, I said teleport. There's one where you're allowed to eat in the classroom. There's one where you can ask the teacher, if a question, if an answer is right, you get like one time you can get a free check on your test, 
which is pretty cool. Uh, but it's supposedly it's been very successful, and like even when kids, if they do badly, so if your character dies, you get detention. And supposedly the kids don't even mind that much because it's all trapped in this game thing. Uh, they're not as upset about punishments, and they're enjoying education more. And I think there's he's working on also doing an app version so that it's easier for more schools to try and adopt this. Uh, but it is a really interesting idea to gamify the classroom. I know that's uh, like everything's being gamified or being talked about gamified these days. Well, I I think that's a big thing because I mean. When you look at playing a game, board games, video games, you know, we keep doing them. You keep going in, even if it's a repetitive task, you keep going to it. Schools like that, except... It was the carrot on the stick. Yes. But, like, with a lot of times in schools, it's a lot more frustrating and scary, because a lot of times, like, with SATs, it's like, if you fail this, you're doomed for, like, <laughs> it, it ruins you for, like, years. So, like, making a game into it and maybe taking away a lot of the... Failure, the fear of failure, mm -hmm. will not. Well, I think will not only get people more interested in it, and it'll, it'll take down cheating because you're not going to cheat if you're so scared that you're going to get doomed if you make one small step. <laughs> right, right. It's it's like I got to do my homework or my character will die. <laughs> right, but maybe it'd be more like I could do the minimum, but maybe I can get these cooler abilities if I studied also into this subject. It, yeah. it, you might go out, which is awesome. Way. I do think there is something to be said. Like, it, it could be a little worrying. I don't know about, maybe not this in particular, but I know a lot of other game things where it becomes this thing of, do, like, do we, is that what everyone needs now? Like, it, shouldn't, you, shouldn't you be able to find a way to make kids actually enjoy learning for itself rather than, like, tricking them into it? Oh, no, I, I understand it completely. And, no, well, that's the problem. Yeah. And I do think, and I think this is a step forward. We just need to make our education system, we have to decide, really. We're, we're sort of stuck in this thing of whether we want people to have a, lot, uh, a broad learning experience or whether we want to just focus down and get high numbers. You, it's really hard to have both because right. it, 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 it pulls you on the kids' minds and throughout, whether it's all the way to college. That's why China's beaten us in every test score. Well, actually, I think most countries are. I think we're like uh, <laughs> at least. That's why everyone's <laughs> beaten us every test. But um, no, I think this is a great step forward. Um, I think there are a lot of other things we can do. And the biggest problem, the biggest challenge, is that this isn't an answer for everyone. Not this mm -hmm. won't work for all kids. Right. And unfortunately for a lot of teachers, there's only so many teachers to go around compared to the number of students. So um, hopefully, this will maybe help the teachers. Maybe uh, so the kids start learning on themselves so they can focus maybe on, on other kids who can't work with this. Mm -hmm. And then we can slowly start the ball ro rolling so everyone will start just hopping up their own. Not because that they feel forced to or fear, but because they want to. No, I, I, I agree. I, I mean, I definitely think it's a great idea. And I I'm, I'd really want them to push it forward just to see what happens, you know, because it, it could have a real positive Well, not only that, like you said, with the apps, we really need to, we have so much technology in our hands. Oh, yeah. We need to bring it to the schools. We need to upgrade. I mean, right. I mean, it's that's just, a whole other, yes. you know, money but, and all that issue. <laughs> Getting real yes. political today on the show. Uh, but we'll leave it to you. What do you think about this? Uh, think tell us in the this? comments. Would I mean, you we, let your kids role play in school? <laughs> LARPing in classes. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Um, but anyways, anyways. Uh, earlier we were speaking of video games. <laughs> That's true. <laughs> and um, one video game, The Witcher, is coming out with a digital board game, which will, I believe it's in closed beta right now, if I'm correct. That's correct. And um, so that looks interesting. And I believe they're also coming out with physical copies. Well, it's, or it's a some weird kind of, situation. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> they actually announced the board game a while ago, mm -hmm. and now they're announcing the digital version of the board game. Uh. <laughs> so, so it's a digital version of a physical board game based on a digital video game. Well, uh, I mean, it's interesting to see how they interact, whether they're actually the same thing or whether maybe one somehow interacts with the digital differently. Like you can, I don't know, if it was like Skyland or something, you could take your board game figurine and put his stats on your board game. Maybe something like that, it'd be interesting. Or maybe like you can use it to continue where it left off if you can't meet up with people. I know some games that could really use it, uh, like anything that has maybe more than five decks, I don't know. <laughs> but um, yeah, I know, and if you go on the website, you can try to join the closed beta. I don't know exactly how it works, but it's not, uh, it's not open to everybody, but everybody can try to get in. Um, but have you ever played The Witcher? No? I have not. 
I, it's it's my, one of those. Only until recently have I even had a computer that could possibly play it. <laughs> I have the first two. Well, there's only two so far on my on Steam, of course, and haven't played them. Supposedly, there the stories are great. People and, and like the choices you get to make in terms yeah. of morality. And That's stuff. the other hurdle. Well, you buy it, but since it's on Steam, you know, there's like 50 other games. It was like five bucks. And then the, the sequel was like five bucks. I was like, well, if I'm going to play the first one, I'll need that too. <laughs> That's what I did with Mass Effect, and I played both of those. So. You haven't played three yet? Both of those. <laughs> I didn't buy three. <laughs> so it's okay. Oh, well, uh, spoilers. That's your birthday gift. No, not really. <laughs> Damn. Except it'll, be on, except it'll be on. will be on different system. <laughs> <laughs> Ooh, you would do it. Uh, I would. Did you have other Witcher thoughts? Um, I mean, I'm a digital board games. We'll see what happens. Uh, we had the digital Catan game, which, um, frankly, I think uh, could use a little bit of uh, some improvements. That'll, we're gonna we'll do a digital game topic yeah. one week maybe, so, maybe uh, next week we'll get back to that <laughs> we will uh final story of the day just a little announce announce for you that's british for announcement no it's not <laughs> maybe it is you don't know uh fantasy flight games has announced new additions to two of their popular lcgs the game of thrones lcg and android netrunner so but uh before we continue let's make sure the people know what an lcg is perhaps we should it's a living card game if you're not familiar, that's basically a collectible card game, only instead of getting random packs, you get packs with the same cards in them for everybody. So you know what you're buying when you buy a new pack. Which is nice, so you can be like, you don't have to worry about singles, whether spending packs over and over until you get the card you want. There's no rares, there's nothing like that. Everyone has the same playing field. I mean, I'm sure there's still a single market for it somehow. I always assume there is, but I mean, I, it's a great idea, especially for a lot of card games. I mean. There are some other ones. These are the two big ones, though, right? Um, definitely, you know, Android's fairly new, but it's definitely huge. Game of Thrones, obviously, mm -hmm. is Game of Thrones. Um, there's a few others. There's a Star Wars one. Oh, there's right. some is, other stuff. Isn't there, and there's a Lord of the Rings one. Yes, I believe there is Lord of the Rings one. But uh, I, don't, I don't know, licensing, licensing stuff. I don't know if any other original ones besides Netrunner, although I'm sure there have been. But anyway, so the Game of Thrones pack coming up, uh, it is called Secrets and Schemes. And supposedly it's, you know, delves more into some of the, uh, le uh, not lesser known, but not more of the less action heavy characters, I think. Uh, I know Peter Baelish is one of the cards. Mm. <laughs> um, I re I, we really need to start, we should try playing it because uh, I've been going back and uh, reading more of the series and the show, which I like. And I know you, we need to get you more into it. Uh, but we enjoy the games of the thrones. I'm sorry, I'm a little slow at catching up. I promise I will catch up. Anyway, here's who dies. <laughs> <laughs> oh, please. The internet already spoiled that for me. Oh, I actually got spoiled the other day for something. I was really pissed. Anyway. Really? You actually got pissed? Every, I'm like, I gave up on getting angry about finding out who dies. Spoilers will always make me mad. No, especially <laughs> because the thing is, it was in a place that was completely unrelated to it. Uh, and it was a thing that happened, well, it happened in the books a long time ago. But it was like, I've avoided it for like a year. <laughs> so anyway, the other one. Spoilers. I, we're talking about spoilers. <laughs> Android Netrunner. Uh, that one is going to be called All That Remains. And yeah, I like that title. That's going to have some new, a new criminal runner class, so that's, that sounds neat. And also some new card abilities that have a new effect type, which is uh, they do things when scored. They'll have new effects, so it's going to keep, keep reactions going uh, more constantly as, as you do things in the game, which is pretty cool. Yeah, uh, I mean, that'll be interesting to see what happens. Uh, we need to work on it because somehow we always seem to, the runner always seems to die really fast. <laughs> both, we, we, both games, yeah, that we, we need to put more time into. Uh, we're busy, guys. <laughs> we're busy, guys. There are a lot of games out there. All, all right, right uh, so that's all our news. That is all our news. So. I think that means it's time for the topic of the week. So our topic of the week for this week is Kickstarter. For those who don't know, Kickstarter is a crowdfunding site similar to Rocket Hub, GoFundMe, and Indiegogo. Now, for these sites, you can say, let's say you had an idea to build something like cool okay. furniture, board game, whatever I want to make it is. A couch. Yes, you have an, an awesome idea for a couch. And it has a, a bunk bed on the top. Yes. <laughs> Anyways, <laughs> you find out how much, well, hopefully, you find out how much you'd take to make that minimum. Money wise. Well, money wise. And uh, you post on the site along with some rewards. And now people can, po can do $1 donate to you or they can do more. And usually you have rewards like if someone donated $5, they can get a little card that says thank you. 
If they donate more, maybe they get the product in question. And if you have famous people involved, maybe they have a dinner with them. Um, and this is really cool. And if you go over your funding goal, you, they may have stretch goals. And these might be upgraded uh, quality of said product. Maybe you can reach more people with it. It depends on what your, what your idea is. And in particular, board games yes. have been able to take advantage of Kickstarter very well. So yeah, uh, as you just said, as he just said one second ago, board games, huge on the Kickstarter. If you've been following our news page at Roll for Crit, or even just watch the show, you've seen we post about Kickstarters, talk about Kickstarters a lot. Oh, quite a bit. Um, because, because of Kickstarter and how easy it is to use, there, there's just been this swell of independent designers and people who aren't necessarily working with big manufacturers or big publishers, they don't have access to those kind of resources, allows them to get these games out that otherwise, you know, even, even a year ago or two, wouldn't have been possible to have made. I guess, I guess Kickstarter's been around for a, f a couple, at least two or three years, but it keeps on getting bigger and bigger. Every day I see more and more of these Kickstarters, and a lot of them are successful too. Yeah, uh, not only that, uh, some big companies like Queen's Games, for example, will actually now put their games up because uh, it allows them to see you know, a general idea of what people want. Mm -hmm. um, I think it allows you for companies to directly talk with the consumer Mm -hmm. So I, it cuts out a lot of the middle and it just allows for a lot more. It, it eliminates the risk because mm -hmm. there's, no, there's no worry that your product won't sell. Right. Because if it doesn't sell. If, if you don't make the mark, you don't. There's no. You, you neither don't. the consumer has to pay and I don't believe you have to pay as the idea maker. Right. You don't, you don't get charged if they don't get funded fully. Right. Um, and like you said, I, I've, I've backed um, uh, coup, which I believe is indie board and card. Yes. The, the people who make the resistance. So it's another example of a big publisher who's mm -hmm. used it. So it's nice I, that everybody can, it's, it's good for everybody really. Yes. And, and even for consumers because you get to, you know, you, you get to get in on usually they're a little cheaper than when they come out to stores. Yes, that's, a, well usually you, it's incentive. Like sometimes they'll come out with special promos that are Kickstarter ex exclusive. Right. Um, which, which can are, be double-edged. We well, talk about that. usually what they do often, what I've seen is it'll be a promo and you, for a year you can't get it, but then they'll release it and you can buy it. Mm, right. Or it may be alternate artwork. So it's not really game effect. It's just a really nice artwork version. True, true. So um, it's, it's not too bad usually. But let, let's talk about things that are bad because there's a dark side. Oh, of course. Um, I mean, like we said, the promo thing is a little iffy because... You can it, only, it can. It, it, I think it's it, a double. It, that is a double sword. Yeah. To people. But um, sometimes you could fund something successfully, and it might not happen. <laughs> this in particular happened with a board game called The Doom that came to Atlantic City. Now you may actually see this on shelves and like be saying, "Will I've seen this game? Why is this happening?" Well, apparently, what are happened? You lying to me. <laughs> we are liars. You should know that. Um, the, apparently, it was funded. But then nothing happened. Apparently, the one running it, like not the guys who designed the game, but like it was like the one running said, "No, no, no. That money was to make the company that was to make the game." And right. this whole debacle. Luckily, um, Cryptozoic Games picked up uh, the Doom that came to Atlantic City, so it is coming out soon. Hopefully, depending on when this airs. So, I mean, luckily for the backers, and I believe Cryptozoic is also. Um, uh, giving the people who backed it the rewards they deserve. Which is really nice yes. of them. And uh, so, I mean, there is some some cautionary tales no, to I Kickstarter. Mean, that, that is the big risk because Kickstarter doesn't really have any kind of a safeguard in place for that. They don't really have a policy of, uh, you know, of they don't punish the person if they don't do it. You know, they put all of that they're just the, the third party, and it's all in the hands of the people. So, although that's very rare uh, that that has happened. No, it is. I mean, I've backed a lot of games, and uh, uh, which brings me to my next error. But I mean, they've always given uh, given updates of actually making the game. So, I mean, and I have received some of them. Uh, one of the next problems is don't plan to back Kickstarter for someone's birthday or like a <laughs> holiday present. Um, they can sometimes go over that date because problems happen. I mean, maybe there's a misprint in instructions. It's something wrong with the uh, shipment, and it happens. I got a backstarter game. Uh, what was the game I backed for you? Paperback. Paperback. Which is a deck building game, uh, sort of mixed with Scrabble. Very fun game. 
Um, I got it because it said it would come out in December. This is one of the first games I backed, and I'm like, oh, this is a perfect Little game for you. Little did we know. <laughs> and um, I don't think I got it until March. Yeah, so, <laughs> we said February um, or March but of the next year. I mean, it was an understand understandable reasons. It wasn't confusion. They usually, every time I've had a delay, they've told us, they've, I've seen in updates, they've right. told me why. And I, I mean, I just have, I don't think a single, cause I've backed not as many as you. Hell yeah. I, I have a problem with Kickstarter. But maybe uh, four or five I've backed and none of them have, all of them have been delayed by at least a couple Well, no, uh, uh, Jeff, the Jeff Kanata show. You got board game wise. Uh, board game wise. Board game. Only. And I mean, even the non-board games, some of them have been delayed too. But, and I think part of it is because, like we said, it is so many of these independent people they just simply they aren't as used to this business and they don't always know about the manufacturing plus another big thing is those stretch goals because what what they initially envisioned a lot of times is right. not what they end up having to make and that always adds on more time so i think there can be a danger of that but as long as you you know you got to set your expectations yeah no i mean like I said, I backed a lot, and even though some of them have should have come last month, I'm fine with them taking their time. Yeah. You know, the game still looked amazing. Still looks amazing. I'm hoping to see some of them at conventions. And, I mean, I still like the idea of backing all these people. Once again, like we mentioned before. It in makes this, it feel good. Uh, we mentioned earlier uh, India and how uh, the, some of the games there. And I think through crowdfunding is a great way to spread because um, mm -hmm. you don't have to be American to make a Kickstarter. Right. I back things from uh, people from other countries, and I think it's a great way to sort of, once again, spread games that you might not think you could make. Like, maybe we, everyone has an idea sometimes, like, of a cool idea, and you just never imp implement it. This allows someone to be like, I can do this. And I think the flip side of that is the other big downside, I think, of Kickstarter, mm -hmm. which is that because it's great that they're independent and they can make their idea happen, Unfortunately, since they're not going through a publisher, they're also not going through the same rigorous playtesting. Although they usually do it on their own. Actually, <laughs> often a lot of the Kickstarters that I've backed will actually yeah. ask people to playtest them, and they That's go through true. a whole bunch. But there still is the risk of, like, if Fantasy Flight picks up a game and publishes it, you can usually feel pretty good that they consider that a solid product. True. In, in, in these cases, you, you, know, you don't know because you haven't played it. And you might, you know, Dice Tower, whoever might have reviews. So you can usually get a little bit of a Hopefully that's soon. insight. <laughs> right. <laughs> we might do that too. But it is, it is definitely, you might not get something as polished as a full game. But I think that's, that's an, a price to pay in exchange for more original games coming out. Yeah, and I think it's fair. And I think I wouldn't be surprised in the future. What we'll see is maybe, let's say someone back does a game very well and it goes through Kickstarter, they might get picked up by a big board game. Right. right. I mean, I could easily see that happening. That's, and I mean, it sort of happened, like you said, with Cryptozoic, although in a worse way. Yeah, that was not as... Not the way, not what I, what we hoped for. That's not the way we wanted it to happen. So what are some of, like, give me two or three of your favorite that either, that even if you haven't gotten them yet, that you've backed, that you're well, excited for? Well, um, I'm going to put this as sort of one, because it's not as much the game itself, but what they are. They're micro games. Uh, and uh, one of them I backed is Coin Age, which we haven't gotten yet. But another one I backed is um, from the Secrets of the Lost Tomb, which is uh, Raiders of the, Raiders of the Temple in which um, you have put little cards that represent the temple and you use coins. That's, this one is about, takes about maybe that much space. The coinage should probably only take like a card. The idea of the micro games is that they're portable. They're small. Yes, they, you can put them in a wallet. And you can just use coins as pieces to run through. I think that's an awesome idea. Mm -hmm. uh, it makes and they're it, cheap. Yes. Super cheap. Oh yeah, no, all the, those two in question were both uh, pay what you want, in which they say- I think minimum was three bucks. Three bucks, they suggest five. So really it's like, what do you want to offer them? Yeah. <laughs> and that's amazing for what the quality of the games that I got. Oh, that um, great. Which led me to my next one, Secrets of the Lost Temple. Um, which, it looks like this really awesome search it through temple, sort of like Betrayal on, on the House on the Hill. Mm -hmm. Like you explore with different room tiles, but with different scenarios. Like you may be fighting like a, a Lovecraftian monster or a pharaoh that was not from this earth. And it just looks like a lot of fun, these cool miniatures. And I'm very excited about that. And um, if I have to choose one other one, um, you do. I well, I think I actually have to go with paperback because we've actually played that. 
<laughs> took mine. Oh, well, then I'll let you speak about that <laughs> okay. then. Well, I so, wasn't sure. I mean, I had to say just because that's the only one I've actually received. <laughs> well, uh, then if you're going to mention that, then I'm going to have to go... Ooh, there's once again I've backed a lot of games. <laughs> it's uh, it's I had to unfollow him on Kickstarter because I'd get an email every two minutes <laughs> about him and more money he's throwing away. Uh, I'm a terrible person. Um, All for your benefit, though. Uh, I think well, one of my favorites would then would be uh, Dogs of War. It's this game of you're playing as like a small group of soldiers, like special soldiers, and it's like someone finds a cursed artifact and you have to like stop it. And it's like there's amazing miniatures of like mutated people and like there's different groups like there's and it tiled of like the, this evil cup that when it cu touches water infects it. <laughs> Sounds cool to me. Yeah, no, and it's really awesome and it just there's so many, I mean there's so many Kickstarters that go off. It's hard for me to. That's the other big thing. It seems like any Kickstarter game if it has miniatures or zombies <laughs> will be funded. I don't think I've actually funded any that are like actually about zombies. Oh, but but you they are there are a ton of them. Oh, I know there are but there's I a ton of them. Also, uh, not as many Lovecraft, but there's a lot of that too. Oh, no, there is actually a lot of them. It's Oh yeah. People love Lovecraft. It's a, also it's a license they can use for free. Yes. <laughs> Um, so paperback has been great. That's the one I got. Uh, uh, if you like word games or deck building games either, I think it really caters to both of those. Also a great uh, bridging game. So people who don't know as much about games, it's a great way to introduce them because everyone knows Scrabble and that kind of thing. And what, what I like about this over Scrabble mm -hmm. is in Scrabble, a lot of times I'm like, I might have a decent word, but I'm going to give you the triple word score. So I cannot do that. Right. I mean, maybe if you're a pro player, you can... You, it's not, you don't have to no, worry about it. It's using the cards in your hand rather than, no, I mean, Scrabble using the tiles, but you don't have to be like a word genius to play it. <laughs> yeah, and you don't have to, and you're, you're focusing on the word you're making and the card you're buying. It's more about your own thing, which, it, 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 which is easier, especially for someone like me who's not good with words. <laughs> uh, and for ones that I'm looking forward to that I've backed, mm -hmm. uh, Definitely a big one is Chaosmos. Oh my god, yes. <laughs> Which is a sci-fi game where everyone has different planets and there's a special card everyone's trying to get. And the game is timed. And whoever has that card at the end of the game wins. But uh, the card is hidden in certain envelopes for each planet. Right. And you can actually set traps in the planet. <laughs> so you never, at any given time, someone, you don't know, maybe they have the card or maybe it's in one of these planets but then there might be a trap there and so it's this really fun like hide and seek game which and it looks gorgeous looks great oh yeah no that's that that's always what I, I won't lie that's one of my first things like i'll click on a link to kickstarter if i see beautiful artwork uh, yeah well sure i mean that's that's what you gotta have uh and uh the other uh we've talked about it before two rooms and a boom uh a fun a social deduction game that can be played by large amounts of people where you have hidden roles and Lots of different variety in it that I'm really excited for. And both, uh, I'm, I'm expecting Chaosmos to be delayed. It's supposed to come out in October. Two Rooms and a Boom already has been, which disappointed me. But like we said, it is what it is. Uh, but I'm definitely, I mean, I'm always going to keep uh, keep checking Kickstarter. Oh, yeah, always. Especially as more and more come out, that might be the, where a lot of developers announce games and stuff, maybe. Yeah, we'll I mean, it's, it's, it really is. Like, uh, more, I mean, video games, it's been a big deal. But I think more, way more so for board games. I mean, you, you, you see so many of them. Well, once again, with a, video, with a board game, you can do one or two people. Like, oh, right, idea. right. Video game takes a lot, a lot more work so it, uh, and, a lot, and a much bigger team most of the time. Yes. So, yeah, and it's, it's just, uh, yeah, I mean, I think it's, its role is uh, not, it's not possible to overstate how in the last couple of years and in the future, it's like in terms of popularity of board games and how many are going to come out, it's had a huge effect on it. So overall, though, although there's, you know, there's little, little things that can be problems, that's their problems in the traditional way of two. So I, Nothing's perfect. Yeah, I, I mean, Kickstarter, we think it's great. What have you backed? <laughs> Tell us what you've backed on it, whether, it's, um, whether it is a board game or not. If you th and if it's open, uh, tell us why you think other people should back it now. Absolutely. You can and if you are a Kickstarter creator, ah. <laughs> uh, tell us about yours, what you made and uh, what you think. You can do that by leaving us a comment in our YouTube video, or you can email us at rollforcrit at gmail.com. And let's not forget Twitter. Oh, you can reach us at, at rollforcrit or at our personal Twitters at Doricuryu. At Quince.
and Ivan Arhan behind the camera. He's a good guy. Uh, plus, don't forget, subscribe on iTunes, subscribe on YouTube, like us on Facebook, please. Please. That's it. Episode number fünf, which is German for five. Shout out to Germany. Oh, I thought a lot of board games. I thought I thought you were like you weren't sure what number, so you were just. <laughs> <laughs> uh, I'm Jonathan Estes. I'm Will Keeler, and this is the Roll for Crit podcast.